Hi everybody, this is the Swarovski Optic AX Vizio. It combines a 10x32 binocular, a camera, and also identification software all inside. So 20 something years ago, I bought my first digital camera, a little point and shoot camera, it was really cool. Uh, I'd been a film shooter for decades and, and going digital was amazing. And we figured out really quickly thereafter, you could take your binocular, your spotting scope, hold your digital camera up to the eyepiece, get pictures and get amazing shots and videos. And that, you know, it was the same thing for me. I'd come across a lot of consumers. When are you gonna put more video in the product? And, you know, we started out with these big video cameras and it's gotten smaller and smaller. Now it's into your iPhones and iPads and all this stuff. To see it combined with a Swarovski Optic product has been unbelievably exciting. Yeah. So what we have here is a binocular, a camera, but more importantly, processing software inside. So when you look through it and you take a picture of a bird or a mammal, it will tell you in the viewfinder exactly what you just saw, which is amazing. And that is awesome because if you think about it, we deal with a lot of people that are optics experts. They're in the field a ton of time. Like you, you know a lot of birds, but you could travel to some other continent, some other location where you haven't spent a lot of time. Yep. So now being able to more easily identify those birds is just, it's just awesome. And then even for the, the new person getting into the outdoors that maybe doesn't have a mentor or just wants to learn it by themselves or has to learn it by themselves, this is a great tool for them as well. Absolutely. And for me, the other super exciting part is you get all these features combined into one product. Right. You know, always, we always use that expression in optics. You get to, you know, you got to kind of give up one thing to get another. If you, if you want certain light transmission or magnification or whatever the case may be, this is the first product that we've had in a while that combines this many features into one unit. And that is just awesome. You know, people are traveling more, you know, whether it's locally or, or sure. internationally. So not to have all these products, to have this built into one, it's just awesome. And I think, for me, a lot of our products that combine digital and optical, the first time you set them up, you take them out of the box, it takes a little longer because you're really going to go through the features and set them up for what you're going to use them right. for. And the AX is no different. I mean, it, it takes a little time on the first setup, but once you get it done, once you go out in the field to use it, it's super easy to use. So since it is electronic, it has to have batteries, we're going to start with step one, which is unbox it, take out your battery, charge it, and, and away you go. So one of the first things we need to do when the AX Vizio comes from the factory, the lithium ion batteries are partially charged. So you have to make sure they have a full charge going in. All of the systems come with a, a charger base and a USB adaptable charger cord. So you plug the cord into the wall and get a full charge. You'll notice once you plug the battery in, you'll have an indicator light. There's four lights. When you get all four lights lit, that means it has a full charge, but you definitely want to charge the batteries to a full charge before you put them in the binocular. Yeah. From fully dead to fully charged takes a couple of hours, but hopefully you have a spare battery anyway, so that would make sure before you go out in the field, you have a couple of fully charged batteries. Perfect. Now once we have the battery fully charged, you want to put it into the AX Vizio. Yes. So turn it upside down, flip the little lever up, twist 90 degrees, the top pops out. Take out your old battery. And they're definitely a tight, tight, snug fit. Yeah, which is very great. snug, yep. Yeah. And you can see the contacts there, so they go right into the edge here. Push in tightly. A little lip up here that goes underneath, pops down in, twist, boom, you're ready to go. Ready to go. So the next step in the process with the AX Vizio is to attach the next, the next strap. And when it comes out of the box, It'll all be neatly wrapped like this in the packaging. We've already got the straps on this binocular, but let's take it off and reassemble it so yep. they can see it correctly. So this is the Field Pro system, strap system that we introduced first with the ELs and then the NL Pures. Really quick and simple. Push hard, turn to the right, 90 degrees, pops right off. You have a little pin that fits in the receptacle. You can pop that out. Uh, if you want to have your rain guard with a strap fed through it, you can set it up on there and then push the top through. Now with the neck strap, I, I've kind of seen it several different ways. Me personally, I like it on one side, so when you take it off, it kind of falls down on the side of the binocular really nice. Yep. I know some people that use it on both sides, yep. and I know some people that don't attach it at all. So I, I like a one side myself, yeah. So this is how we, we do it quite so a bit. So once, once you re-thread it back through, pop the pin through, and then this just goes into the hole. 
push it and turn 90 degrees and it locks in place. And the nice thing is this spins, so if your strap gets all twisted up like a piece of licorice, you can undo it and it comes right back up again and then your cover can go on top. So now that we've got the strap and the covers properly attached, the next thing we should look at is really adjusting these binoculars to make them fit the person. And eye relief is one of those things, sometimes it gets overlooked, but it's very important. And what eye relief is, is the proper distance your pupil should be away from the lenses to get the full field of view. And everybody's eye relief is a little bit different, right? Whether you wear eyeglasses, whether you don't, the shape of your face, how you hold the binoculars. So there's a lot of factors that come into play. And with these particular binoculars, it gives you a lot of options. From all the way out, if you don't wear eyeglasses, you'll have that full field of view to twist it all the way in and three settings in between. So you've got a lot of options to get that proper field of, field of view and eye relief. And the important part is sometimes if you're all the way out, it's too far and you get a tunnel vision. Or if you're too close, you get the blinkies between the two, uh, between the two lenses. So it's, it's a very, very essential to get it right for your face, your usage. And no matter what distance you're at, whether you get them twisted all the way out or all the way in, your ocular cover will fit back on perfectly. Right so one of the other features that we need to talk about to really get the full comfort of these binoculars is having the correct interpupillary distance. Right, and that is opening and closing the eyepieces to match up to the distance between your eyes because the beams of light coming out the eyepieces should be heading straight into your eyeballs. Uh, if it's too wide or too narrow, you're not gonna get a comfortable image. Um, and you and I have done enough shows handing binoculars to people. As soon as they put them up to their face, we can tell if it's too wide or too yep. narrow. Um, but it's, it's a pretty easy test. You just put it up there. And if you're not seeing uh, a single, imp, single circle, you have, to, you have to adjust it. If it's, it's not like the movies where, you, where they always say binoculars are two circles. No, you, sit, you have a single circle. Yep. So and everybody's this, face is a little bit different. Mm -hmm. So everybody's yep. going to have a slightly different interpupillary distance. Exactly. That's correct for them. Exactly. So the next feature that we need to adjust with the AX Visio is the diopter correction. What is diopter? Everybody's eyes see a little bit different from their right eye to the left eye. So the diopter correction allows you to adjust for that difference. Yep. Now, it's a little different in an electronic product. Sure. Now, with you, if you wear glasses, your eye doctor has hopefully evened out your vision, so technically you should be at zero. But with this one, since the electronic readout is through the right side only, you first want to make sure that you can clearly see the readout, making the diopter uh, correction there, and then the rest of the process will get it back into your, uh, for good vision. And one thing we want to make sure of before we start is that your diopter correction, which is right on the eyepieces themselves, are both set at zero to begin with. So once we have them set at zero, now we're ready to turn on the binocular and complete the process. Right, so the button up front, universal on off switch, press down and hold. You're gonna get a light turning on. When it goes green and stays on without flashing, that means you're fully, fully on. And then you're ready to start uh, uh, setting your diopter for the, uh, for the read outside. So the next step in the process, once your green indicator light is permanently on, we're ready to adjust the diopter. The first thing you want to do is take your covers and cover the right side tube. A lot of people will say close your right eye or close your left eye when you do this, but what you don't realize is that kind of messes with your vision. So we like to recommend either use your hand and cover the tube or use the product that's supplied to actually cover it so your vision can remain exactly what you typically would use in the field. Exactly, so you're not straining the, mu the muscles around your eyes. Yeah. So once that right side tube is covered, the next step is you want to take the diopters that you previously set at zero, turn them counterclockwise as far as they can go. So now what that's setting it up is when you look through the right side, you're going to see just the display and no, no, in, no, no backgrounds, anything like that. So for me now, the display is blurry, so I'm going to turn my diopter setting until I can read the numbers nice and sharply. There we go. So now this side is, is set so I can read it. I'm gonna pop the eye cover off and now I'm gonna focus the focus wheel up top on something distant, 100 yards, 150 yards away at a distance. And the nice thing is he mentioned 100 yards. That's a great distance, 100, 150 yards. But pick something like a tree that has good con uh, contrast within that object so when you're focusing you can really hone in and get a good focus. So now I'm seeing with my right eye that sharply. 
Remember, our left eye diopter is way out of focus, so I'm going to cover this back over again, either with the cap or with my hand. Look through the left side at the same tree, and instead of touching the focus wheel, I'm going to use my left diopter to get that tree in nice, sharp focus. And now when I take hands away, everything is perfectly sharp for me. And now I can use my focusing wheel for far and near, and everything is good, plus I can see the readout perfectly clearly. So once you complete this process and everything's adjusted, if you wanted to shut the binocular down until you're ready to use it, you just press and hold that on-off button for three to five seconds and the LED indicator will go off. So one of the next things I'd like to walk through is, is really a physical feature of the binocular. If you look at the binocular itself, you'll see these three buttons on the front. So let's kind of walk through what each button does in the functionality of the binocular. So the one up here, that's a universal symbol for on and off. So push it up, push it, hold it down to turn it on, hold it down for five seconds to uh, get it to turn off. And that's pretty much all it does. If you haven't used it for a while, it will go to sleep. You pick it up, all you have to do is tap on it and it can, comes back on to, to full operating. Second button is a little arrow. And this allows you to, when you're in a mode, so like I'm in bird photography, I have two circle sizes, a big one and a small one push this to cycle back and forth between the cycles, the, the sizes. If you're in mammals, you have squares, you have three different square sizes. Use that to cycle between the different size of the boxes that you want to put your subject into. Last button, the circle, which is up top. And this one is a little more raised, so you can, you can tell by, by touch when you're looking through it, you can still tell which one you're on. This is your shutter button. And just like most of our cameras nowadays, if you push it halfway down, that engages the autofocus, engages the auto exposure, and usually in the viewfinder it'll show you that the, that there you've got it, give it a and, little symbol. and then and then you can push farther down and it takes the picture. And it, it's a pretty easy uh, to tell the differences between the halfway down and the all the way down. So there's a little little stop there. So and that's it. It's it's three buttons and everything works. So once you have everything adjusted to your specific needs and you want to go out in the field to use it, the proper way to turn the binoculars on and off, when you're going to turn them on, you go to the on off button. To turn them on, you would press and hold for three seconds. You'll see a yellow indicator light come on and then the indicator light will blink green for about 30 seconds and then go solid green and you're ready to use it again. Yep. In the evenings, if you want to shut the binocular completely down, you'll go back to the on off button You'll press and hold for five seconds. You'll see the indicator light will turn yellow. As soon as you see the yellow, you can release your finger and the binoculars will shut off. Yep. During the day, I keep mine on all the time. It will go to sleep if you don't use it for a period of time. So that way it saves your battery. And all you have to do to get it back from sleep when you pick it up is just tap on the on off button and it comes back on. Uh, I've found that the battery goes pretty much the whole day without having to change it, but I do carry a spare just in case. So the next feature we want to discuss is what we're really excited about. Yeah. It's this mode selection wheel that allows for all these functions on the binocular. And the first place we want to start is the Merlin Bird ID. Right, so Merlin Bird ID is the photo ID program that you can get on your phone, but here it's completely enclosed inside the Vizio itself. So you don't have to have any other device with you and it'll still see stuff and give you identifications. 10,000 species worldwide are in here, which is completely amazing. Which is great for us, right? And from a consumer perspective, we've got a lot of people that are, are diehard birders, yeah. right? And even just general outdoor yeah. enthusiasts. But this is also great for someone who's just getting into it, that doesn't really know all the birds out there, know all the mammals. So this particular feature, especially the Merlin ID, is such a well-received Well, even me, who knows a lot about North American birds, if I travel to Australia, everything's new. And if I don't have a guide to tell me what's there, this thing will. Yep. I mean, if I get a nice shot, it'll tell me what, what all I'm looking at. So turn it to the Merlin, and uh, you'll see looking in the view, you get two circles, a large circle and a small circle. You're going to line up the bird inside the circle and fill the, fill the circle as, as best you can. So if you're and really... And you can select right. the size of that circle, right? right? Depending push that, on how close or far away yeah. you are from the bird. Push, push the arrow to get the big circle or the little circle. So like a uh, great blue heron or something, you probably want the big circle. Uh, a warbler up in the tree, you probably have to push this to get to the smaller circle. Once you see that, you hold, the, hold your button halfway down. That turns on the autofocus. As soon as it focuses on the bird, the system starts to analyze what the bird is. And you'll see it on the four segments of the circle right. where they'll start to light up a little bit more yep. as it's making that yep. selection. And it, and it even gives you the percentage. So once you see all four segments, 
push the button in, release, and it takes the shot. And hopefully it got the right picture and it'll read out on the bottom what it was. Um, so yesterday we were at the beach. We had a bunch of uh, seagulls standing there. Well, I put it on the button, pushed it down, and it said herring gull. Beautiful. So it actually gives you the name it of the bird tells you what in it is. the viewfinder. Yes, which is really cool. It, it can also say uh, bird not identified if it didn't get the right look. Uh, and then you can take another shot and, and redo. And for me, the nice thing is the navigation of all this is really simple, really yep. quick. Once you get everything set up with this binocular and this product, it's really easy to use in the field. Yes. Uncomplicated, you only have three buttons. That's a really good thing. So the next really exciting function for us is the Mammal ID software in here. And, and yep. same as we did with Merlin, you can also do it with the mammals. Right, and this is for mammals in Europe and North America. So I think it's 300 and something species, and it's everything from moose and elk to chipmunks, everything in between. And it's the same way. Once you select the mode button, which is the little squirrel there, yep. you'll look through the binocular itself, yep. and you'll have three different options here on the size of the square right. to identify the mammal. Again, using the arrow button to choose between the sizes, and you want to obviously try and fill the square as much as possible with the subject. So if you're a Yellowstone and it's a bison, you're going to get the big square because he's pretty close. Yep. If you're trying to catch a chipmunk or something like that or a flying squirrel, you might have to go to the smaller square. And everyone's going to be a little different. Like you said, you just got to kind of gauge it, but try to fill the square right. or the circle with the Merlin right. ID with as much of the mammal as possible. And the process is the same. Push the button down and then push all the way to get the shot and get the identification. Yep, and what you'll see, once you push the button halfway down, the squares will start to light up as it's making the identification. Once they're all lit up, then you complete the press, release it, and it will give you the mammal that's in the viewfinder. And again, you know, we talk a lot about experts in optics, and we have a lot of them here at Swarovski yeah. Optic, but you know, this is a great feature for someone just getting into it, for the, like you said, traveling to Yellowstone, going to places you may not have traveled before to see animals, you kind of know what they are, but really to get that identification, it's a great feature on this product. So the next function on the AX Visio, which I know you're excited about, is Absolutely. the fact you can use this product as both a still camera and a video camera. Yep, exactly. So when you go onto your mode dial, choose the camera, and that puts you into camera mode. So now um, look through it, and it'll start out in stills. So push the button halfway down, starts the autofocus. It'll give you a visual indicator in there that the focus is locked and that everything is good. Push the button all the way and it takes the picture. And that's assuming that you'll be pretty close focused at this point because you've already right. found them through the binoculars, exactly. use the center focus, exactly. and then you can use that button. Yeah. Uh, if you want to do videos, then use the mode, uh, the, the arrow button to cycle between still or video. And once you're in video, just like a video camera, push the button to start the video going. Take your video, well, however long it is, push the button to stop it. And that's the great feature, right? Whether it's a still photo or a video, yep. it stores it in the binoculars. Right. And we'll get into a little bit later how to download the images from your binocular to your smartphone. Yep. But for me, it's, it's everything about this binocular. That's yep. what makes it so great. I mean, obviously we talk a lot about people that are in the field a lot, doing a lot of birding, a lot of hunting, whatever it is. And the, the Merlin ID, the Mammal ID, that's all great. But you could be on a family vacation, you could be at the lake, you wanna get a nice image of the boat across the lake. Sure. This product allows you to do that. Beautiful sunset, whatever, yes. And 32 gigabytes of storage, so you have a lot of room for lots of still photos or a, quite a bit of video. You got a lot of different pieces, a lot of different varieties of why you would use optics, whether it's binoculars, cameras, video cameras, all built into one piece. And you have a field guide. It gives you identification, uh, plus your pictures, all in one unit. You don't have to forget things. So the next feature that I'm pretty excited about and is really unique is what we call our share discoveries feature. And I know you and I have been in the field a lot where you, you're with a companion, you spot something and your buddy just can't find it on the hill or you have a lot of trouble walking each other into where it is. Right. What this allows you to do is for you to find the object, set where the object is and give me the binoculars to more easily find it. Turn your mode dial to the share function. I'm gonna look through it, find that deer or find that bird push on my shutter button like I'm taking a picture, but now what it's doing, it's remembering exactly where it was. I'll hand the binocular over to Dean. Now keep in mind, I can't walk 10 feet away. I've got to be able to be in the same vicinity looking at the same line, and for 60 seconds, it gives me arrows left, right, up and down and diagonal to walk in and find that same object that Clay was looking at. This is a unique feature that only the AX Visio has.
So there's a second way, if you're with a companion out in the field, to kind of help them find an object. And, and we call it the compass feature. So you can go over to the icon of the compass. And now in the viewfinder, you get all the degrees, obviously 0 to 360 degrees north-south, plus also inclination degrees up and degrees down um, to give you a view. And we call that tilt. And the yep. nice thing is, depending on what you want to see in the product, the arrow button you can use to see either compass and tilt, or just compass or just, just tilt. tilt. So yep. whatever you're using in any specific situation, yep. you can kind of select it. So if I've got a bald eagle on a tree, I can say it's 27 degrees east and then up 10 degrees and boom, there he is. But it's a nice way, like you said, to help uh, a companion find an, sure. an object. You're able to just say, okay, go to that degrees and go up. Or even if you're hiking and you want to follow a trail or something, it, it's, it's, it's a digital compass that works very, very well. Yep. A lot of boating activities sure. with people that we work with, so that uh, it's a great feature built right into this product. So now, when you have a lot of photos or videos in the binocular itself, we have the capability to download everything to the app. Correct. But the first thing we've got to do is go to your app store yep. and download the Swarovski Optic Outdoor app. And it's right. really simple to kind of get the two to talk. Basically, you download the app. Yep. Go ahead and then on the underside of the binocular, the serial number is right down in here. So you take your serial number, input it into the app. It sends back kind of like a pass, uh, password code, if you like, um, that views in the Visio that you then app, download that into the app and boom, it, it connects right through. And so now all the images that you have, all the videos that you have we'll can, be, can, be, can be downloaded straight to the, um, to, to the AX Visio. Interestingly enough, the basic communication back and forth is Bluetooth, which is, which is quick. But to do the bigger volume, bigger, bigger bandwidth of the, of the videos and stills, then it will ask you to connect to Wi-Fi with your phone, and then it Wi-Fi's all that stuff down. So there's two different methods of communication, depending on how you want to do that. And the nice thing now is once everything's connected, yep. it gives you some other features yes. that you're able to do. You can control parameters. You can, you can do all kinds of stuff and, and, and kind of customize it, they, I think they call it, is is make, make sure you have it to do what you want it to do, yep. Mm -hmm. And then even like you were discussing earlier that when you have it all connected now, when you're out in the field, you're able to look through the binocular and have other people kind of sign in and it, they're able to see those right. images. Right, so if you're in camera mode, remember we had camera mode up there that was stills or videos. When you get in camera mode, you can also then have people log in and be able to see live on their screens whatever the Visio is showing, which is really neat. So you can have, you know, like you're, you're in a van in Yellowstone and the wolves are running across the road and you're tracking with a binocular. Everybody can watch it on their screens, tap it for, for screenshots or even take the videos of, of what the Visio is seeing. It's and, pretty slick. And that's such a great feature. We talked before when you have one product and it's tough to spot targets. Well, yep. we came up with a solution for that. But yep. then also if you have multiple people, three and four people, yep. Rather than trying to get everyone into the binocular, now you can have them look at it through their, sure. their smartphone yep. or their iPad or, yep. or whatever. Yeah, it's pretty genius. <laughs> yeah, excellent. So this product, at the end of the day, yes, it's a Swarovski optic binocular. So the quality of glass, the quality of what you're seeing through the product, it's awesome. It's a 10, by, 10 power, 10 by 32. Yep. So good field of view. Um, you know, good ergonomics. The binocular is kind of chunky, but you have to have room for the batteries. You have to have room for all the electronics and all that. But it fits the hand well. Um, for me, the only tricky part is with the with the um, shutter buttons and all the control buttons on the right side. I have to learn how to focus with my left fingers because normally I, I focus binoculars with, with my right hand. So I'm, I'm learning to become ambidextrous and focusing. Yep. But that's actually not been a big deal. And, and the buttons are pretty intuitive. And like I said, that shutter button is raised compared to the other two, which are flatter, so I can tell immediately which button I'm on. Um, yeah, it's, it's actually quite intuitive to use in the field. And now you take the quality of the glass and the product and you add in all these yep. features, these technological features yep. and, and being able to talk to the smartphone and all these different ways to use this one yep. product that you're carrying yep. in the field. And, it really does uh, kind of complete your outdoor yeah, experience. And you can go anywhere in the world and you get a good picture of a bird, it tells you what it is. It's going to know where you're at in the world. It's going to go into Merlin and say, go through these pictures and boom, there's your, there's your identification. Yep. And we, we talk so much about immersing yourself in nature, yep. right? Like we've been around it for a long time and we get into it, but now people just getting into the outdoors or if they've been in it a long time, yep. they've got a lot of different features to hopefully keep everybody happy. Absolutely.